I leave my lovely Airbnb in Brösarp, headed for the island of Öland on the east coast of southern Sweden. There are still some spots to be discovered before we head to Öland, like the rolling hills that surrounds Brösarp. This particular location is called Brösarp södra Backar and is easily accessible from a rest area by the road south of Brösarp. The whole area is a great place for hiking, with lots of hiking trails, such as the Skåneleden SL4 trail system. On small roads we reach Haväng, where the Verkeån Creek meets the sea. Closest to the sea, there is a long stretch of sandy beach, and inland there are large heaths that is being kept open by grazing animals. People seems to have enjoyed the area for several thousand years. This collection of rocks is a 5,500 year old grave. There is a significant difference in elevation between the beach and the heaths, creating an excellent viewpoint. Right in between Brösarp and the coast, there is this nice little church in the village of Ravlunda. The church were initially built in the 13th century and the tower with the crow step gables was added in the 15th century. The interior is a little newer, with the altarpiece being dated to 1592, the pulpit 1618, and the benches made in the mid-18th century. Along the way just south of the village of Olsröd, you will encounter a beautiful view over the fields and the sea. I stopped at an agricultural road to enjoy this peaceful location. Next stop is Forshakar Nature Reserve, a ravine with a couple of waterfalls surrounded by beech forests. There are hiking paths both on the bottom of the ravine and along the ridges on both sides.
The authorities advised not to use the paths on the bottom of the ravine due to the risk of falling trees, but it is the only way of seeing the waterfalls close up. I took the risk and it was well worth it. About halfway to Öland, I take a break at Bräknehobi Church, an unproportionally large church for the village it's situated in. In the 1860s, the wealthy parish of Hobi demolished a smaller 12th century church, and in 1872, this neo-Romanesque style church was completed. En route I found this small unmanned farmers market along the coastal road in the Blekinge region. This farmer obviously has a sense of humor. Inside there are various locally produced products for sale, like ice cream, vegetables or honey. Pick what you want and put the money in a box or do a digital transfer. Not far from the farmer's market is the little coastal village of Christianopel. It was founded as a fortified town in the early 17th century by the Danish king Christian IV as this part of Sweden was under Danish rule at that time. Christianopel was built to defend Danish territory and the border to Sweden was just to the north. In 1658, Christianopel came under Swedish rule, and a few decades later, the 9 meter tall walls around the city was partly taken down to be used as building material for the new fortified town of Karlskrona. The church is the only building in Christianopel that remains from the Danish period. It was completed in 1624 and the interior is from the same time. To get to Öland you cross the 6 km long Öland bridge. On the other side of the bridge in Färjestaden I stopped to have a look at a car meet by the harbour. It happens to be Thursday and every Thursday during the summer months there is a car meet here.
continuing south through the Öland countryside to the small village of Alby on the east coast of the island. The Galerie Blåporten in Alby offers both art and accommodation. When I visit they are closed for vacation, but the owner is kind enough to let me rent a room anyway. Tomorrow I'm going to explore a little more of this long and narrow island. <laughs> 